Hi, viewers, and welcome to another racing-based preview of this weekend's Thoroughbred Racing. We've got uh, plenty of Group 1 racing on this weekend, starting off with the Moya Stakes at Mooney Valley on Friday night, uh, Randwick on Saturday. We've got the Epsom Handicap, Flight Stakes, and the Metropolitan, followed by Sunday's Turnbull Stakes. So, um, as usual, to join me, I've got Rick Chapman on the other line, and we'll dissect the races and see if we can find a winner or two. Rick, how are you, mate? I'm very well from Man of My Habits, and don't forget, too, outside of racing, we've got the uh, NRL Grand Final this weekend as well. Big weekend of sport. Yes, NRL, AFL. AFL, that's right, I forgot. Does anyone watch that? Yeah, of course they do, mate. Ah, of course they do. Now, a great weekend of sport. And, of course, we've got Jared Hayne playing again for the, uh, the 49ers. The out of form 49ers, although he did have a fantastic 37 yard run the other day. Yeah, mate, it was good to see the Aussies doing well. Um, all right, Rick, we've got a busy week, so let's kick on with this. Moya Stakes Friday night. Have you got a tip there for us, mate? How do you see it playing out? I do. I think old Rain Affair has to cross from where he's drawn, so he'll go hard out of the gates and he'll probably lead. Portal Muscle will sit up behind him, and that'll be something new for him because he's never been led. Buffering will move up on his outside, and I think two fillies down the bottom, Fontaton and Petites Falous, will get glorious runs with cover. Uh, one will be on the fence and one will be one out. I know there's a fear that Fontaton will be trapped three deep, but the way the speed will be, they'll string that field out, and those two fillies are going to get fantastic runs, and they will sweep home, and uh, as good as Petites Falous is, I think the other filly might be better. So I'm going to go for Fontaton to win. Narrowly from Petites for loose and uh, uh, the old fellow buffering will, will, will box on to get third just in front of uh, Ball of Muscle and Rain Affair. Yeah, well, firstly, I've got to say I'd love to see buffering win this to become oh. the, the first horse in history to, to win three more um, more stakes. Uh, would be a great feat. He definitely deserves it. He, he's been a champion for so many years now and... Um, I'd love to see him win, but I'm sticking with the, the filly, Petite Spalou. I, I think she just gets the gun run. And before we started recording today, Rick, we had a, a lengthy discussion about the, the speed of the race, and we, we both differed there, and you know, we see different things taking place. So it'll be interesting to see how it does play out. Um, I, I can still see Petite Spalou getting a gun run, um, one or two pairs back, and with that lightweight, quick section she's running, undefeated at the valley, she can step up and um, claim victory here, I think. Yeah, great race. Great race. I think uh, there will only be about a length and a half between about seven or eight of them as they cross the line. So that's uh, always the foundation for a great race. Sure. Okay, mate. Well, let's move on to Randwick on Saturday. Three group ones there. Start off with the big, biggest one of the day, the Epson Handicap. Uh, what have you got picked there for us, mate? I'll be out there. The weather's going to be 32 degrees in Sydney. The track will be lightning fast, so it'll be a true run race, particularly the Epsom, because you've got three natural-born front runners in the race. So that sets it up for back markers, as I mentioned in my mapping story. Uh, I'm sticking with Kiramosa, trained at the track. She should have beaten Lucia Valentina home last start, and she, and she did beat Lucia Valentina home the start before. I think that's the form line. So I would be very surprised if... Uh, the three mares don't flash down the outside off that hot pace early. So I'm going to go for Kiramosa to win from Winks, who is outstanding, but I think one run short. Uh, Lucia Valentina will be there, and Rudy, uh, I think, is a very good miler, and he'll be punching uh, up with them as they cross the line too. But fantastic finish. Uh, again, like the Moya, the girls are going to have it. Okay, just, just quickly before I give my analysis of that race, Rick, what do you think of uh, Chris Lee's putting blinkers on Lucita Valentina for the first time? I think it's an odd move because she gets back anyway. Uh, she does. She never shows any pace, but I know Chris and he's a masterful trainer, so we can't knock him and he uh, makes judgment calls based on how they run, their racing patterns and how they work. So that might turn her on. She might find the form of a year ago. If she does that, she blows them away. But... Uh, um, and then there's nothing wrong with the last two runs. They've both been outstanding. Uh, they've been every yeah, bit of... She, she peaks third up every campaign. Um, and, and now I've gone through the form lines. When I first looked at this race, I thought Winx is just a standout. That last run is one of the biggest you've seen. And 
I was tempted just to tip Winks, but um, you know, I had to do the form. And, and after doing it, look at Lucia Valentina, her first campaign, she took out a Group 3 race in New Zealand, third up from a spell. Following campaign, she came to Australia, took out the Binary Stud Stakes, third up. In the next campaign, Group 1 Turnbull Stakes, third up. Um, last campaign, she went to the Ranvet third up, ran third to Contributor and Toast and Stardom, and that's cracking form, although she ran third. So you've got to say this mare peaks third up every campaign. She runs an absolute blinder, over 2,000. Now, I, I think the reason Lees has put the blinkers on her is he wants her to sit more forward than, than she would normally be comfortable. But, but being a strong 2,000 third up, She's only got to go 1,600 on Saturday. She can afford to sit out of her comfort zone. So I, I think you'll see her sitting closer to the pace, and she's going to be too strong for them and just blow them away. Well, the mile, when the pace is on, at Randwick is like a 2,000 metre at any other track anyway. So, uh, so so that should play into your thing. I just worry if, if the reasoning behind putting the blinkers on is to go forward, I just can't see that working for her because there's, there's so much pace in the race and that'll, that will take, as you mentioned, out of her comfort zone and therefore flatten her finishing burst, which just adds more merit to the chances of Winx and uh, my hope, I hope uh, Kiramosa finishing brilliantly down the outside. Incidentally, Kiramosa has great dry track form and this track is going to be lightning fast on Saturday. I, as I said before, I think the form line is the Lucia Valentina Kiramosa form line coming out of those weight for age races. Uh, and as good as Winx is, um, I think she's one run short. I think she, six months time, will be one of the best horses in the country. But at the moment, with that weight, uh, oh, I'd like to see her win because I love her. But uh, yeah. um, the, the compressed weights is the, the the biggest thing this year, isn't it? We we normally see quite a spread of the weights in the Epsom, but this year it's completely different, and and that changes things. And I think that also gives advantage to Lucia Valentina. She's as I said, two Group 1 wins, a Group 3 and a Group 1 placing from four third-up attempts. Um, you won't see many horses with better third-up form than that. No, you can't. That's outstanding. No? Yeah. Well, we'll see how it pans out. Great race coming up. Okay, Kira, most for you, Lucia for me, mate. Let's get on to the Metropolitan. Tough one for me. To be honest, I'm, I might have something small on Magic Hurricane with no confidence. I, I'm... Like I said, a small bet, but um, I won't be getting carried away there. But how do you see it, mate? Well, I wrote a story on it for race, uh, for Betty Pro, and uh, I start to studying the form, and I changed my mind three times, and I rarely do that. Rarely do that. Um, good race, a good renewal. Telling, telling, telling you it's a tough race, and um, you know, and, and it usually is. Yeah, it's a good renewal of the uh, of the uh, Metro seven hundred fifty thousand dollars this year. So you'd expect a good field. I'm going to go for Lloyd Williams' horse, Chance to Dance. Uh, it was given no favours second up in the same race. Magic Hurricane finished second in. They both carried the same weight. There was length of three quarters between the pair of them as they crossed the line. Again, similar to your thoughts, I think that is the form line race going into that. Chance to Dance will derive an enormous amount of benefit from that. He sat three deep that entire race. What not a great ride. This time he's drawn perfectly. He will get a glorious run, probably two pairs back in about fifth or sixth position, one off the fence. I think Bonfire will set a cracking pace, but I think Chance to Dance will finish too strongly and set himself up as a potential Caulfield Melbourne Cup uh, horse. Um, I love Magic Hurricane. I think he'll run the, the exacta. And Bonfire and uh, Janub will fight it out for third with Janub getting the bob uh, right on the line because he... Does Pete remember he won this race last year only to lose it uh, in the swabbing room uh, a little bit later? Yeah, that's right, to opinion. Yep. But again, the compressed weights for this race as well. I would have loved to have seen Havana Cooler get about 52 kilos. I would think he would have made it very interesting, but he's, you know, he's on the same weight as, as group uh, horses. So uh, I can't see him carrying that weight, drawing wide and finishing too well. Uh, but it would be a good race too. But I, I kind of like this chance to dance. I think you might be have a touch of class. And the two Irish bred horses will fight it out, him and Magic Hurricane. So there you yeah, go. Well, well, next... I think it's one for the brave to punt in, mate. And um, good luck if you can find the winner there. And you should get decent odds at least if you can land the winner. But um, just a, a bit of a tough one for mine. 
Yeah, well, people will bet on it because A, it's a group one and B, it's the last race of the day, the Get Square Stakes, so that they'll, everybody will be having a go at it. Uh, but Chance to Dance Swine, I think, came up 10 to 1 this morning, so that'll do me. Okay, mate, just quickly, the other group one at Randwick on the day, the Flight Stakes, it's a... Uh... It's another leave leave race for me, mate, and I, I hate to sit on the fence, but if I'm not confident, I'm not going to stick my neck out and steer punters into something I'm not confident in. So um, how about yourself, Rick? Have, any confidence in that race? Yeah, I did stay to the form. It's a funny thing, life, uh, with horse racing. If there's pace on over a mile, horses who you think might be suspect at it tend to be able to just keep poking along. I remember Vivace for the late Bart Cummings leading all the way and winning the Champagne Stakes after leading in the slipper and getting rolled. So on that basis and the anomaly that is uh, human or equine nature, speak fondly, should be able to lead all the way. Now, the only thing that worries me is that Gay might cannibalise herself in this race because she's got four in it. They've all got great chances, but they all will go forward. So I hope that she has a word in each of their ears and just says, look, Boys, don't kill each other. Find spots, but speak fondly. You go to the front and, and you control the race. If that's the case, then she's a class horse and she gets the prize from on Esther and Pearls will be the hardest to beat, I think, and Flamboyant Lass will be there too. Okay. Well, that's a um, round we covered, mate. Sunday we've got um, Group 1 racing as well with the AFL Grand Final being on, Rick, on, uh, on Sunday, so uh, on Saturday. Turnbull Stakes, probably the... Biggest race for me for the weekend. Um, I'm keen on Alpine Eagle there. I think he looks a weighted certainty on Saturday. Um, obviously, there's no certainty in any race, but down on the weights, his last run in the Fiby Diva was phenomenal. He covered more ground than any horse in the race. He was less than a length from uh, Faulkner. He's going to peak third up from a spell. He'll, he'll hit peak fitness, and he can hold that for his next run as well. Um but the turn of foot this horse showed third up last time was phenomenal. And like I said, with the, the lightweight, he drops four kilos. He just looks too good for me. Well, I mapped the race uh, and wrote about it, and I had him uh, being right there at the finish too, I think finishing third or fourth. Uh, so I, I, I agree that he's, he's ready. He's ready to run a great race. It was a fantastic performance. He did actually loom up and look at the winning chance last start. So he's got to be fitter this time around. Yeah, he just um, peaked in his last, probably last 50 metres he peaked last time, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. He was, That's he after was, sitting three wide the whole way, four and five wide wide on the corner. Um, like I said, he covered more ground than anyone else, but just you know, just ran out of steam and, and he was stripped much better. No doubt about that. He's proven that he can, uh, well, he's won at 1,800 at, at stakes level, so... But I've gone against him. I think the best horse in the country is in this race, Hartnell. And uh, I think he will, because there's no natural pace in the race, and this is an anomaly that we don't see too often, there's no natural pace, so something has to take it up. And, and I've got a sneaking suspicion, because he is so good and comma, so much better than the rest of this field, that James McDonald will take Hartnell to the front and try and steady them. And if that's the case, then he wins for fun. Because um, nothing will take... No, that backfired first up. Big pun. That backfired. That ploy first up. He he sat up on the on the pace, Rick, and was, was disappointing as a short price favourite. Yeah, well, you look at him last campaign. First up, he came from second last in a Group One race um, and flash time, and then he started running up on the pace. So maybe they got a bit too cocky. Uh, he's since had a barrier trial and just looked phenomenal in winning it over twelve hundred metres. Uh, they would have done that only to sharpen him. He'll get out of the gates. He has to go forward from where he's drawn and he'll lead. And probably Rising Romance has to go forward too. So she'll come across and sit on his outside. But she will not put heavy duty pressure on him. And, uh, you know, you talk about Petite Falouse with exceptional uh, sectionals. This horse, when he just goes, he can really, he'll improve. I, th I believe he'll improve dramatically from his first up run. And I, I think he's the Caulfield Cup winner, and if that's the case, he wins this for fun. Yeah, I, I think the glosses has come off of him well and truly, Rick. His contributor was disappointing first up. Punters were confident he'd bounce back second up, and he didn't. Hartnell, same sort of thing. They both trialled magnificently before their first up assignments. Hartnell disappointing first up. Everyone's expecting him to bounce back again. 
proof will be in the pudding. I suppose we'll find out on Sunday. Um, before his first up run, I would, I would have been with you, Rick, saying that he's going to win you know, pretty much everything he contests. But after what I saw last time, I just can't touch him. Yeah, he's a better horse this time. And he's not complacent. Uh, he, not complacent. He's not a contributor either. This is Hartnell. He's the best. And I've, I've been saying it, as you know, for many months now. He's, he, he's, a, he's a galloping machine. Yeah. That's okay. Great. Hartnell for you. The eagle for me. Hopefully, um, throughout one of the five Group Ones, we've we've found a few winners, Rick, and um, have steered the punters, punters into some profit. Yeah, there's good prices there. There's good betting there. I think because that that fellow's going to be seven uh, seven to one, fifteen to two or so. Uh, Hartnell and uh, the, the Metro horse is ten dollars already. So uh, and I like Kira Moser, and she was eighteen paying eighteen dollars. So. Uh, I could have a fantastic weekend or be looking emu bop and looking for tickets on the way home. Yeah. <laughs> oh, good luck to yourself. Good luck to everyone that's uh, that's watched. Hope you all enjoy a great day of racing um, or great weekend of racing. Uh, I'm sure we all will Friday, Saturday and Sunday. And uh, until next week, um, Rick and I will be back to preview some more racing. Fantastic weekend of sport in general, particularly highlighted by horse racing and, and the two football codes. Get on your favourite team. Remember, punting is easy, and uh, we'll see you in the winner's circle.